1969, Apollo 11 cleared the tower at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Astronauts Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin, harnessed in their seats atop this 36-story Saturn V launch vehicle, headed for the moon, more than a quarter of a million miles away. For the Apollo project, NASA chose a flight plan known as Lunar Orbital Rendezvous, which required a special vehicle to detach itself from a moon-orbiting mothership descend and land on the moon and propel itself back to the mothership for the return trip to Earth. Built for NASA by Grumman Aerospace of Bethpage, New York, this detachable vehicle, officially known as the Lunar Module, or LEM, and named Eagle by its crew, was one of three modules contained within the spacecraft. Near the top of the rocket stack was the command module, christened Columbia, it served as living quarters and operations center for the three astronauts during the week-long trip. Below it was the service module, which stored enough power to propel the spacecraft to lunar orbit and return it to Earth. Beneath that was the lunar module, carried within the spacecraft LEM adapter. Reaching an escape velocity of 24,200 miles per hour, Apollo 11, with its three astronauts and service and lunar modules aboard, was injected into its translunar trajectory. Once the accuracy of the flight path was confirmed, the panels of the spacecraft LEM adapter were opened, and the command and attached service module separated from Saturn's third stage, rotated 180 degrees, and docked with the Eagle. As the Eagle was pulled from the third stage, Apollo 11 finally settled into its three-day voyage toward lunar orbit. As Apollo 11 approached the moon, the service module engine was reignited as a retro rocket to inject the spacecraft into a circular orbit around the moon. 76 hours after leaving the Earth, the spacecraft sailed behind the backside of the moon and, as expected, temporarily lost contact with the command center in Houston. As the vehicle reappeared, and as it descended to 80 miles above the cratered surface, Armstrong and Aldrin worked their way through the narrow docking tunnel into the LEM and activated the LEM environmental control system. With its landing gear deployed and landing radar tested, the Eagle used its reaction control jets to separate itself from the command module. Operated in the vacuum of space, this spidery vehicle had no need for aerodynamic symmetry. It had only to provide the astronauts with optimum control for a descent and landing among the moon's many slopes and boulders. Michael Collins would remain aboard Columbia, parked in a circling orbit to await the LEM's return. At a distance of 60 miles, as they approached the Sea of Tranquility, the area judged most suitable for landing, the Eagle started down. The descent engine was throttled to regulate the speed of descent. Commander Armstrong pitched the LEM downward for a better view of the lunar terrain. Assisted by onboard computers, he guided the LEM to a level area that would allow it to touch down without tipping over. Altitude, velocity, light. In and down, 20 feet. There were just a few feet to go to landing, but Apollo 11 was running out of fuel. Less than 30 seconds of maneuvering power left. Suddenly, a 40-foot wide crater appeared. Armstrong took manual control. Forward, 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 40 feet down, two and a half, picking up some dust. Big shadow, four forward, drift into the right a little. 30 seconds forward, just... And then, a world okay, holding its collective stop. breath heard. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Like a powder. Six and a half hours later, oh, Neil Armstrong uh, became the first high. person from planet Earth to step onto another celestial oh, no, body. He stood on the powdery surface and observed. That's one small step for man. Buzz Aldrin joined him, and the two elated visitors began their exploration. 
They gathered moon rocks and soil samples, set up solar wind and seismic experiments, and discovered one of the best ways to get around in one-sixth the gravity of Earth. And they planted the American flag, propping it up for a wind-blown effect in the airless void. Still ahead, the rendezvous with Columbia. Aldrin and Armstrong would have to launch themselves into lunar orbit and do it alone. As in the Apollo missions that followed, Lem's ascent stage engine fired. Lifting crew and lunar samples into lunar orbit. The descent stage, which served as a launching pad, remained on the surface along with the experiment packages. At 60,000 feet, the ascent stage engine shut down and Aldrin and Armstrong coasted to rendezvous with Collins in the command module. They maneuvered the LEM with its reaction control jets to the precise point of interception. During the docking maneuver, Eagle was pitched over to bring the command module's docking hatch into view. Once docking was completed, Armstrong and Aldrin transferred themselves and their lunar samples to Columbia for the return flight. Having completed its function, LEM's ascent stage was now jettisoned and left behind in lunar orbit. Returning to Earth, Columbia, with its three space travelers, separated from the service module and returned safely, concluding one of the greatest human explorations of all recorded time. <laughs>